In this Godot tutorial, we're going to learn how to create this flashing effect using a fragment shader. If you want to get the assets and the starting project, take a look at the link in the description. With that being said, let's begin. So inside of the example project, we have a 2D player character that can run and jump. And you can see that it has an animated sprite node. We're going to create a fragment shader for this so that we can create the flashing effect. Let's go into the player scene. You can see that we have the animated sprite 2D right here. We're going to create a material for this from the inspector, a new shader material. You can click on that to open it up. And then inside of here, we're going to create a new shader. We're going to call this flash.gd shader and place it inside of the shaders folder. This is going to be a canvas item shader because it's a 2D shader and we can set the template to be empty. We don't need it. Once you create it, you can see it in the file system. You can also click on it here from the inspector and that's going to bring up the shader editor. You can see that we have the shader type set to be a canvas item shader, which is great. And now we're going to create the fragment function, which is going to look like this. Inside of here, we can determine the color of each pixel for this sprite. So let's think about this a little. How are we going to create the flashing effect? First of all, we want to set the pixels of the character sprite here to white. And then we want to be able to animate, you know, going towards the white color and going back towards the original color of the image here. We know that we can set the color of a pixel by calling or by using the built-in color variable, which is a vector for. For example, I can set this to be a vector for of ones, just like that. And that's going to turn the sprite 2D in a, into a white image. So why is this happening? And why did we turn all the pixels to white? Because if you comment this out, you can see that the pixels up here, for example, or down here, here, these are transparent. We don't want to actually turn these white. We only want to turn the ones within the character here into white. But as you just saw, if we simply set the color to be white, all of those pixels will be white. So first of all, we need to fix that. But before we do that, let me explain how this vector four works a little bit more if you're not familiar with it. So within the shading language, we display colors using a vector four. The first parameter is the red channel. The second one is the green channel. Third one is the blue channel. And the final one is the alpha channel, which determines how transparent or how opaque is the you know, final color. One is the, you know, the full, the maximum value that you can assign and zero is the minimum. So for example, if I set green and blue to be zero, then the sprite is going to be red because red is set to be one, the maximum. I can set the green to be maximum, then it's going to be green. I can also play with the alpha. If I set it to be 0 0.2, it's going to be very transparent. We're going to be able to see what's behind it, or I can set it to be 0 0.8. In that case, it's also going to be a little bit transparent, but not as much. Usually we're going to give this a one though. And for now we're going to use a white color because we want the flash effect to be white. So in order to maintain the transparent pixels that we have, we need to get the original color of this texture because the original color knows which pixels are transparent and which pixels are not transparent. We can get it by using the texture function with the built-in texture variable and the built-in UV variable. This is going to return the color. We'll call it the original color. And down here, we'll assign it to color, just like that. This isn't going to change anything. It's simply going to take the color of the sprite from the texture, and then it's going to assign it back to the final color. So we're literally getting the same color and putting it back into the same place. But now inside of this original color, we know the alpha value for each pixel. What I can do is instead of setting it to the original color, 
I can you know, do the vector four of ones again. So if I only provide a single argument here, it's going to use it for every, you know, the four channels, red, green, blue, blue and alpha. And then I can set the alpha to be original color dot alpha. Semicolon. Now, as you can see, we're only setting the pixels on the image white. We're keeping the transparent values because in the original, the alpha channel is zero for these ones, for example, and we're keeping that at the end with this line. Okay, so we're now one step closer to the flashing effect. This is going to be, you know, the color we're going to use for the flash, but obviously we don't want to just set it to be white. We want to be able to kind of you know, mix the actual sprite color with the white color. So to do that, first of all, we're going to create a uniform vector four. We'll call this the flash color. We're going to use the source color hint, and then we'll set the default value to be zero. If you take a look at the shader parameters on the right, now we have a flash color. I actually want to set this to be one, not zero. Reset that. Now we have this flash color and it's actually a color picker because we used the source color hint. And now we can pick a different flash color here if we wanted to. Next up, we're going to mix the flash color with the original color. And we can do that here by using the mix function. So let's create a new vector for, we'll call this the mixed color. We're going to use the mix function with the original color and the flash color. This is going to take in a float as the third argument. And this floating point number is going to determine how much of the first color we're using and how much of the second color we're using. So if we set it to be zero, for example, it's going to use 100% of the original color. So let's actually use the mixed color here instead of setting it to be white. So if we have zero here, we're using 100% of the first color. If we have one here, we're using 100% of the second color so that it turns completely white. If we have 0 0.5, we're using 50% of each. You get the idea. We can control this floating point number to mix the colors. So we don't want to do this from the shader. We're going to create another uniform variable to control this. This one is going to be a float. We'll call this the flash percentage. We're going to use the hint underscore range hint, and we're going to give it zero and one, and then we'll set the default value to be zero. Just like that. Now we're going to use this instead of, you know, this hard coded number here, save that. If you take a look at the shader params, we have the flash percentage here, and now we can control it from the inspector. And it only goes from zero to one because we use the hint range that goes from zero to one. Great, so you can see that we can animate this flash percentage to create the flashing effect that we're looking for. We can actually do this within the shader, but I'm going to show you how to do it using an animation player because I feel like that's the better way to do this. So that means this is going to be the final shader code. So within the player scene, now we're going to create an animation player. Oops, I had it there. Within the animation player, we're going to create a new animation. We'll call this flash. We're going to make this 1.2 seconds long and we can make it loop and we can make it auto start so that we see what it looks like when we play the game. So at the start of this, animation, we're going to set the flash percentage to be zero. So let's click on animated sprite. That's going to bring up the shader editor though. So from the bottom panel, we're going to pick the animation again. Now we're going to key the flash percentage at zero, create it. We're going to go to 0 0.3. We're going to key the flash percentage at 0 0.5. Key, we're going to go to 0 0.6. Now we're going to key this at zero again. We're going to go to 0 0.9. We'll key it at 0 0.5 again. 
And finally, we're going to go to the end at 1.2 and we're going to key it at, let's see, what was this one? Zero again. Now, when we play the animation, you can see that we're going up to 0.5%, flash percentage going down, back and forth again, which is going to create this flashing animation, which in my opinion looks cool. You can use this when the player gets hurt or when something happens to the player to indicate that the player is, you know, recovering. It can't be hurt again until this animation is over. And like I said, you can give this a different color as well. So if we get out of that, we can set, let's see, the flash color to be, for example, red and play the animation again. Now it's um, flashing red. Okay, cool. So let's set that back to be white and let's play the game to see what it looks like here as well. And you can see that it's flashing white. I think it looks cool. Maybe we can increase the flash percentage a little bit actually, um, but I'm probably not gonna play with it too much right now. Um, if you want to make it look better, feel free to customize this more. If you like this tutorial and you want to continue learning more about shaders in Godot, take a look at this video.